You have just been listening to a play in eight scenes, specially written for broadcasting by Mr. Humphrey Stoke, called The Sleeping Dog. Then that's that. Hope you didn't bore you, Miss Mockridge. Not in the least. I don't like the plays and the stuffy talks. I like the dance music. So does Gordon. <laughs> you know, Miss Mockridge, every time my brother Gordon comes here, he annoys us by fiddling about trying to get dance music. <laughs> How many scenes did we miss? Five, I think. I suppose they must have been telling a lot of lies. That's why that man was so angry. The husband, I mean. But which was the husband? Was it the one with the adenoidy voice? Yes, the one with the adenoidy voice. And he went and shot himself. Very pathetic, I'm sure. Rather too many adenoids. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to the men. They're probably laughing at something very improper. No, just gossip. Men gossip like anything. Of course they do. Quite right. People who don't like gossip aren't interested in their fellow creatures. I insist upon my publishers gossiping. Yes, but the men pretend it's business. You've got a marvellous excuse now that they're all three directors of the firm. <laughs> <laughs> yes, of course. I think Miss Peel ought to marry Mr Stanton. Oh? Why? To complete the pattern here. Then there'd be three pairs of adoring husbands and wives. I was thinking so all through dinner. There you are, Alwyn. I'm almost prepared to marry Charles Stanton myself, to be one of your charmed circle. What a snug little group you are. Are we? Well, aren't you? It is rather nice here. We've been lucky. Enchanting. I hated leaving it. You know I'm in the London office now, not down here at the press. But I come back as often as I can. Mm, I'm sure you do. It must be so comforting to be all so settled. <laughs> Pretty good. But uh, I suppose you miss your brother-in-law. He used to be down here too with you, didn't he? You mean Robert's brother, Martin? Yes. I was in America at the time and I never quite understood what happened. Something rather dreadful, wasn't it? <laughs> oh, have I dropped a brick? I always am dropping bricks. No, not at all. It was very distressing for us at first, but it's all right now. Martin shot himself. Oh. It happened nearly a year ago. Last June, in fact. Not here, but at Fallow's End, about 20 miles away. Taken a cottage there. Oh, yes. Dreadful business, of course. I only met him twice, I think. I remember I thought him very amusing and charming. He was very handsome, wasn't he? Yes, very handsome. Who was very handsome? May we know? Or is it some grand secret between you? <laughs> Not you, Charles. They were talking about me. Bessie, why do you allow them to talk about your husband in this fulsome fashion? Have you no shame, girl? Darling, I'm sure you've had too much manly gossip and old brandy. You're beginning to look purple in the face. A typical financier. I was sorry to be so long, Frida, but that wretched puppy of yours. Uh, what's he doing now? Eating the script of Sonia Williams' new novel. <laughs> I was afraid it might make him sick. <laughs> <laughs> you see, Miss Lockridge, how we talk of you novelists. Yes, I heard you. I was just saying what a charming, cosy little group you've made here, all of you. I'm glad you think so. I think you've all been very lucky. Yes, I agree, we have. It's not all luck, Miss Mockridge. You see, we happen to be nice, easygoing people. All except Betty. She is terribly wild. That's only because Gordon doesn't beat her often enough, yet. Yeah. You see, Miss Peel, Mr Stanton is still the cynical bachelor. I'm afraid he rather spoils the picture. Ah, Miss Peel can't afford to talk. She's transferred herself to the London office and deserted us. I come back here as often as I'm asked. But whether it's to see me or Robert, we can't yet decide. Anyhow, our wives are getting jealous. Oh, frightfully. What's disturbing the ether tonight? Anybody know? Uh, Gordon, don't start again. We've only just turned it off. What did you hear? The last half of a play. It was called The Sleeping Dog. Why? We're not quite sure. Something to do with telling lies and a gentleman shooting himself. What fun they have at the BBC. <laughs> 
You know, I believe I understand that play now. The sleeping dog was the truth, you see, and that man, the husband, insisted upon disturbing it. He was quite right to disturb it. I think it a very sound idea, the truth is a sleeping dog. Of course, we all do spend too much of our lives telling lies and acting them. Oh, but one has to. I'm always fibbing. I do it all day long. You do, darling, you do. It's the secret of my charm. Very likely. But we meant something much more serious. Well, serious or not, I'm all for it coming out. It's healthy. I think it's about as healthy as skidding around a corner at 60. Well, life's got a lot of dangerous corners, hasn't it, Charles? It can have. If you don't choose your route well. To lie or not to lie, what do you think, Alwyn? You're looking terribly wise. Oh, I agree with you. I think telling everything is dangerous. But the point is, I think, there's truth and truth. I always agree to that. Something and something. Oh, shut up, Gordon. Go on, Alwyn. Yes, do go on. Well, the real truth... That is, every single little thing, with nothing missing at all, wouldn't be dangerous. I suppose that's God's truth. But what most people mean by the truth, and what the man meant in the wireless play, is only half the real truth. It doesn't tell you everything that went on inside everybody. It simply gives you a whole lot of facts that happen to have been hidden away and were perhaps a lot better hidden away. Rather treacherous stuff. Yes. Like the muck they drag out of everybody in the law courts. Where were you on the night of the 27th of November last? Answer yes or no. I'm not convinced, Miss Peel. I'm ready to welcome what you call half the truth. The facts. So am I. I'm all for it. You would be, Robert. <laughs> what do you mean by that, Prince? Anything, nothing. Let's talk about something more amusing. Who wants a drink? Thanks, Robert. Cigarette. Oh, this one's empty. There's some in here. Miss Mockridge. Not for me, thanks. Cigarette? No, thank you. Oh, cigarette. Oh, I remember that box. It plays a tune at you, doesn't it? Yes, I remember the tune. It's the wedding march, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Good, isn't it? it? It can't be this box, as you remember. This is the first time I've had it out. It belonged to someone else. It belonged to Martin, didn't it? He showed it to me. He can't have shown it to you all when you didn't have it when you saw him last. I didn't know he hadn't got it then, Frida. That doesn't matter. I do know that Martin couldn't have shown you this box, Alwyn. Couldn't he? No, perhaps he couldn't. I expect I got mixed up. I must have seen a box like it somewhere else and pushed it onto poor Martin because he was always so fond of things like that. Alwyn... I'm going to be rather rude, but I know you won't mind. You know, you suddenly stopped telling the truth then, didn't you? You're absolutely positive this is the box Martin showed you, just as equally Frida is certain it isn't. Well, does that matter? Not a hoot. I'm trying to find some dance music, but this thing has suddenly decided not to function. Oh, well, don't fiddle with it. Don't bully Gordon. Will you stop him then? No, I... I don't suppose it matters, Olin, but after what we've been saying, I couldn't help thinking that it was rather an odd, provoking situation. Just what I was thinking. It's all terribly provoking. More about the cigarette box, please. It's all perfectly simple. No, Frieda, I don't think it is all perfectly simple. But I can't see that it matters now. I don't understand you. No, neither do I. First you say this can't have been the same box, and then you start hinting at grand mysteries. I believe you're hiding something, Alwyn, and that's not like you. Well, either the box you saw was Martin's or it wasn't. Oh, damn the box! Oh, but it's just stands. I'm sorry, but I hate a box that plays tunes at it like that anyway. Let's forget it. Yes, and Martin, too. He's not here. We are. We're warm and cozy, such a charming group. Let us mention Martin or think about him. Bad form, he's dead. There's no need to be hysterical about him, Gordon. I would think you owned Martin to hear you talk. Nobody owned Martin. He belonged to himself. Needs some sense. What does that mean? It means that I'm being rather stupid and you're all talking a lot of rot and I think I'm going to have a headache any minute. How is that all? Isn't that quite enough? So whose box was it then, Olga? I wish you wouldn't be so absurdly persistent, Robert. But it's quite simple about the cigarette box. 
It came to us with some other of Martin's things from the cottage. I put it away, and this is the first time I've had it out. Now, the last time Alwyn was at Fallow's End was that Saturday when we all went over. You remember, the very beginning of June. Gosh, yes. What a day that was. And a marvellous night, wasn't it? That was the time when we all sat out in the garden for hours and Martin told us all about those ridiculous people he'd stay with in Cornwall. The hand-woven people. Yes, and the long, long, thin woman who always said, do you belong? Hmm. I don't think I ever had had a better day. We'll never have another like that. Yes, it was a good day. No, I had no idea it meant so much to you, Gordon. I suspect it's Robert's old brandy. And those enormous glasses, they go to his head. Well, where do you want them to go? The point is, then, that the first Saturday in June was the last time Orwin was at Martin's Cottage. Yes. And I know that he hadn't got the box then. No, I never remember seeing the thing at the cottage, so there you are, Owen. There I am. You are a baby, Robert. I don't know where I am. Out of the dock or the witness box, I hope. Oh, no, please. That would be too disappointing. You know, that wasn't the last time you were at the cottage, Owen. Don't you remember? You and I ran over the next Sunday afternoon to see Martin about those little etchings. Yes. True. But I don't remember him showing us the cigarette box. In fact, I've never seen it before. I've never seen it before. And I don't think I ever want to see it again. I've never heard such a lot of fuss about nothing. I wouldn't be too sure about that, Charles. But I may as well tell you, if only to have done with it. But he couldn't have shown you the box that Sunday, anyway, because he hadn't got it then. You seem to know an awful lot about it, Frida. And that's just what I was going to say. Why are you so grand and knowing about it? I know why. You gave it to him. Did you, Frida? Yes. <laughs> I gave it to him. Odd you never mentioned it. When did you give it to him? Oh, it's quite simple. Do you remember the day before that awful Saturday? You were staying up in town. I came up for the day. Well, I happened to see the cigarette box at Calthrop's. It was amusing. <laughs> Rather cheap. So I bought it for Martin. And Calthrop sent it to Martin down at Fallow's End, and he never received it until that final Saturday. Well, that's that. I'm sorry, Frida, but it's not quite so simple as all that. You mustn't forget that I was with Martin at the cottage that very Saturday morning. Well, what about it? Well, I was there when the parcel post came with the letters in the morning. I remember Martin had a parcel of books from Jack Brookfield. I don't forget anything about that morning, and neither would you if you'd been dragged into that hellish inquest as I was. But he didn't have that cigarette box. Must have arrived by the afternoon post, then. What's the matter? Oh, it doesn't matter at all, Frida, darling. Except that at Fallow's End, parcels are never delivered by the afternoon post. Yes, they are. No. How do you know? Because Martin used to grumble about it. And say so that he always got books and manuscripts a day late. That cigarette box didn't arrive in the morning, because I saw the post open. And it couldn't have been delivered in the afternoon. Frida, I don't believe those shop people in town ever sent the box. You took it to Martin yourself, didn't you? You are a fool, Gordon. Possibly, but remember, I didn't start all this. You did take it to Martin, didn't you? Did you? Well, if you must know... <laughs> I did. I thought so. But if you went to the cottage after Gordon had left, you must have seen Martin later than anybody, only a few hours before he shot himself. I did. I saw him between tea and dinner. Then why haven't you said anything about it? Why didn't you come forward at the inquest? You could have given evidence. I could. But what good would it have done? It's bad enough Gordon having to do it. It was hell. If it could have helped Martin, I'd have gone. But it couldn't have helped anybody. You're quite right. They couldn't. Yes, I understand that, but why didn't you tell me? I mean, why did you keep it to... Why have you kept it to yourself all this time? You must have been the very last person to see Martin. Was I? He must have been. What about Alwyn? Alwyn? And the cigarette box. Yes, of course, the cigarette box. 
Martin didn't get this box until after tea on that Saturday and Alwyn admitted that he showed it to her. No, she didn't. She said it was some other box and I vote we believe her and have done with it. No! No, Mrs. Whitehouse. Yes, I do. It's all wrong going on and on like this. I second that. And I don't. Oh, but Robert... No, I'm sorry, Betty, but Martin was my brother and I don't like all these mysteries and I have a right to know. All right, Robert, but must you know now? I don't see the necessity. But then I didn't see why I should have been cross-examined with the entire approval of the company, apparently. But now that it's your turn, Alwyn, I've no doubt Robert will relent. I don't see why you should say that for him. I'm sure you don't, Robert. You might as well admit it, Alwyn. That was the box that Martin showed you, wasn't it? So you must have seen him. You must have been to the cottage that Saturday night. Yes, he did show me the box. It was after dinner, about nine o'clock, on that Saturday night. You were there too? Now, this is crazy. First Frieda and then you, and neither of you have said a word about it? I'm sorry, Robert, but I, I just couldn't. Oh, what were you doing there? I was worried about something. It was something I'd heard. It had been worrying me for days, and at last I couldn't stand it any longer, so I had to go and see Martin to ask him about it. So I drove over to Fallow's End. I got there just before nine. Nobody saw me go and nobody saw me leave. You know how quiet that place was. Like Frida, I could see that it would serve no good purpose to come forward at the inquest, so I didn't. That's all. <laughs> but you, you can't just dismiss it like that. You must have been the very last person to see Martin. You must know something about it. It's all over and done with. Let's leave it alone, please. Robert, I'm sure we're boring Miss Mockridge with all this stuff. Oh, no. I'm enjoying it very much. We don't mean to discuss it, do we, Frida? Nothing to discuss. All over. Now, look here, Alwyn. You must tell me this. Had your visit to Martin that night anything to do with the firm? You said you'd been worried about something. Robert, please. Now, I must know this. Excuse me, Betty. Was it to do with that missing 500 pounds? Oh, for God's sake, don't drag that money into it. We don't want all that over again. Martin's gone. Leave him alone, can't you? And shut up about the rotten money. Gordon, be quiet. You're behaving like a hysterical child. So sorry. So am I. I beg your pardon. Isn't it? Not at all. But I think I must be going, if you don't mind. It must be getting late. Oh, no. The Pattersons said they'd send their car over for me. Has it arrived yet, do you know? Uh, yes, I heard it arrive when we left the dining room. He's waiting for you. I'll, I'll just... Must you really go? Yes, I really think I ought. It's at least half an hour's run to the Pattersons, and I don't suppose they'd like their car or their chauffeur to be kept out too late. <laughs> Thank you so much. Pleasure. It's been so delightful seeing you all again. Such a charming little group you make here. <laughs> Goodbye, Mrs. Whitehouse. Goodbye. Goodbye. I, I think that you left your lap in my room. I'll oh. for you. Goodbye. Goodbye, Bye. Miss Mockridge. I hear that you had a very good time in America. Yes, I did. It was very stimulating. Have you ever been? For this relief, much thanks. I'm sorry, but I can't bear that woman. She reminds me too much of a geometry mistress we had at Lawsdale. <laughs> I've always suspected your geometry, Betty. Drink, Gordon. No, thanks. I bet she's a gossiper. She is. She's notorious for it. That's why they ought to have shut up. She'll embroider that cigarette box story and have it all over London within a week. <laughs> she'll probably start a new novel in the morning and we'll all be in it. Well, she'll have to use her imagination a bit about me. And me. Perhaps she'll invent the most frightful vices for us, Betty. She can't really do much with what she's just heard, you know. After all, why shouldn't Frida have taken Martin a cigarette box and why shouldn't Alwyn have gone to see him? Yes, why not? Oh, I'd forgotten you were there, Alwyn. Can I ask you something? After all, I don't think I've asked anybody anything so far, have I? You can ask. I don't promise to answer. I'll risk it then. Were you in love with Martin? Not in the least. No, I didn't think you were. As a matter of fact, to be absolutely candid, I rather disliked him. Yes, I thought so. I'll never believe that, Alwyn. You couldn't dislike Martin. 
Nobody could. I don't mean he hadn't any faults or anything, but with him they just didn't matter. He was one of those people. You had to like him. He was Martin. Gordon literally adored him. Didn't you, darling? Well, he could be fascinating. And he was certainly very clever. I must admit, the firm's never been the same without him. I should think not. How could it be? Now we can thrash this out. No, Robert, please. No, I'm sorry, Alwyn, but there's something very odd about all this. First, Frida going to see Martin and never mentioning it, and then you going to see him and not saying a word about it either. You've both been hiding this all along, and I want to get to the bottom of it. Now, it's up to you, Alwyn. Did you go to see Martin about that missing money? Yes, I did. Did you know, then, that he'd taken it? No. But you thought he had? I thought there was a possibility he had. You were all damn ready to Gordon, think that. I want to go home now. I'm going to have an awful headache if I stay any longer. I'm going home to bed. Just a minute. I'll take you along, Betty, if Gordon wants to stay out. No, I want Gordon to come along, too. I'll come along in a minute. I tell you, I want to go now. Take me home. Why? What's the matter, Betty? I don't know. I'm stupid. All I'm right. Stupid. We'll go. Look, I'm awfully sorry if all this has upset you. I know it's got nothing to do with you. Go anyhow. on and on about it. Why can't you leave things alone? Well, good night, everybody. Well, I'll, um, I'll see the infant's home. Then I think I'll turn in myself. Very good of you. Good night. Good night. Now, Alwyn, you can tell me exactly why you rushed to see Martin like that. Oh, we're being truthful now, are we? Well, I want to be. And how about you, Frida? Yes, yes, yes. I didn't care what's the matter. Odd way of putting it. Is it? You started all this, you know, Robert. Now it's your turn. Will you be truthful with me? Oh, good God, of course I will. I loathe all these silly mysteries. But it's not my turn. I asked you a question you haven't answered yet. Yes, I know you have. But there's something that I have to ask you first. I've been wanting to ask this for quite some time, but I've never had the chance, or I've never dared, and now I don't care. <laughs> it may as well come out, Robert. Did you take that money? Did I take the money? Yes. Well, of course not. You must be crazy, Alwyn. Martin took it, of course. Surely you must have known that Martin took it. You can't have been thinking all this time that I did. Yes. I have. But why? I mean, damn it all, it doesn't make sense. I might have taken the money. I suppose we're all capable of it under certain circumstances. But never on earth could I have allowed Martin to take the blame for it. How could you think me capable of such a thing? I thought you were one of my dearest friends. Might as well know, Robert. Frida, no. Please. Please! Why not? What's it matter? You might as well know, and how you can be so dense baffles me. Alwyn is not a friend of yours. Of course she is. She's not. She's a woman who's in love with you. She's been in love with you for ages. That's damnably unfair. It's cruel. Cruel! It's not going to hurt you. And he wanted the truth. Let him have it. Alwyn, I'm terribly sorry. Oh, I suppose I've been stupid. We've always been very good friends, and I've always been very fond oh, of stop, you. Stop, stop. Frida, that was unforgivable. You had no right to say that! But it's the truth, isn't it? You wanted the truth, Robert, and here it is. Some of it. Alwyn's been in love with you for ages. I don't know exactly how long, but I've been aware of it for the past 18 months. Wives always are aware of these things, you know. And that's not all. I'll tell you now, but I've wanted to tell you for some time that I think you're a fool for not being aware of it yourself. 
for not responding to it. If somebody loves you like that, then for God's sake, enjoy it. Make the most of it. Hold on to it before it's too late. Oh, Frida. Well, I understand now. If you mean that Frida doesn't care for me very much, you're right. We've, we've not been very happy together. Somehow our marriage hasn't worked. Uh, nobody knows, of course. Of course they know. You mean you've told them? Of course I haven't told them. They didn't need to be told. Well, Alwyn just said she understood about it for the first time. No, I knew about that before, Robert. This was something else. Well, what? Don't want to explain. I can't talk about it. There's something horrible to me about it, and I can't tell you why. Something horrible? Yes, something really horrible. Please don't just talk about it. But, oh, no, Frida, please. Very well. But you'll have to tell us about the money now. You said you believed all along that Robert had taken it. Well, it looked to me as though he must have done. But if you thought that Robert had taken it, then you must have known that Martin hadn't. Yes, I was sure after I'd talked to him that last night that Martin hadn't taken it. But you let us all think that he had. I know, I know, but I didn't think it mattered then. It couldn't hurt Martin. He wasn't there to be hurt, and I felt I had to keep quiet. Because of me? Yes, Robert. Because of you. But Martin must have taken the money. No. That's why he did what he did. He was scared he'd be found out, and he couldn't face it. No. It wasn't like that at all. You must believe me. I'm positive that Martin never touched that money. It wasn't Martin's style at all, doing some sneaky work with a check. I know he could be wild and rather cruel sometimes, but he couldn't be a cautious, cunning little sneak thief. It wasn't his style at all. He spent enough of it. He's badly in debt, you know. Yes, but that's just the point. He didn't mind being in debt. He could have cheerfully gone on being in debt. Money simply didn't matter. Now, you loathe being in debt. You're entirely different. Oh, yes, and that was one reason why Alwyn, I... Alwyn, thought... what gave you the impression that I had taken the money? Martin was sure that you had. He told me so. Martin told you? Yes. Martin thought that I had taken the money, but he knew me better than that. Why on earth should he have thought that? Well, you thought he was a thief. You didn't know him any better, it seems. Yes, well, that's different. There were special circumstances. And anyway, I'd been told something. Besides, I wasn't all that sure. It wasn't until after he shot himself that I felt certain. You, you say that you'd been told something? But Martin had been told something, too. He'd been told that you'd taken that check. God. And do you know who told him? I can guess. Who? Stanton, wasn't it? Oh, oh my He practically God. proved it to me. He said he didn't want Martin found out, so we'd all stand in together, all that sort of nonsense. But don't you see? He told Martin all that, too. And Martin would never have told me had he not been sure that I'd never give you away. Stanton. Then it was Stanton himself who got that money. Well, it looks like it. I'm sure it was, and he's capable of it. He played Robert and Martin off against one another. It doesn't follow that Stanton himself was the thief. Of course he was. N no, wait. Let's, let's just clear this up. Old Slater wanted some money, and your father signed a bearer cheque for 500. Slater always insisted on bearer cheques, though God alone knows why. Anyway, he was ill the next morning, and he didn't come in. And when he did, three days later, the cheque wasn't there. It had been taken to a bank and cashed. Not the firm's usual branch, because the cheque was drawn on Mr. Whitehouse's private account. Now, only Stanton, Martin, or I could have got at that cheque. Mm. Except dear old Watson, and he certainly didn't take it. And now, this is the point. None of us was known at your father's branch at all. But they said the fellow who cashed the cheque was about Martin's age or mine. Which certainly ruled out Stanton. Your father wouldn't have them identified at his bank, I remember. Mm, no, he was too fond of them all. And too hurt. Well, I understood that he simply wanted the one who had taken the money to confess and then go. Yes, he told me that too. Me too. My father was like that, of course. But what made you believe that Martin had taken the cheque? Well, all the evidence pointed to Martin and me, and I knew I hadn't taken it. And, and Stanton told... Stanton told me that he had seen Martin coming out of your father's room. Stanton told Martin he'd seen you coming out of his room. Stanton took that money himself. Well, whether he took it or not, he's got some explaining to do. 
No wonder he didn't approve of all this business and was glad to be out of it. He got too much to hide. We've all got too much to hide. Well, we'll let some daylight into it for once if it kills us. Stanton's got to explain this. What, now? Yes, tonight. Hello, Chantbury 1 2, please. Are you going to get them back now, Robert? Yes. Hello, is that you, Gordon? Is Stanton still with you? Yes. Well, I want you both to come back here. Mm. Yes, more and more of it. It's damned important. Yes, we're all in it. N no, of course not. No, we can leave Betty out of it. Yeah. And be as quick as you can, will you? Yes. Goodbye. All of them? Oh, uh, no, not Betty. She's going to bed. Wise little Betty. I don't see why you should use that tone of voice, Alwyn, as though Betty were cleverly dodging something. You know very well she's not mixed up in this business. Do I? Well, don't you? Poor Robert. Look at him now. This is really serious, he's saying to himself. How we give ourselves away? It's a wonder we have any secrets at all. Alwyn, you've no right to sneer at Betty like that. You know very well it's better to keep her out of it. Yes, we mustn't soil her pure young mind. Well, she's younger than we are, and she's terribly sensitive. You saw what happened just now, before they left. She couldn't stand the atmosphere of all this. That's not yes. because of... Well, obviously you dislike her, Orwin. I can't imagine why. She's always had the greatest admiration for you. Well, I'm sorry, Robert, but I can't return her admiration, except for her looks. I don't dislike her. I just can't feel as sorry for her as I ought to be. Sorry for her? Is it necessary for you, or anybody else, for that matter, to feel sorry for her? I suspect not, Robert. Anyway, I'm now facing the most urgent problem, the sort of problem that only a woman has to face. If a man is to be dragged back to your house to be told he's a liar and a cad and a sneak and a possible thief, wouldn't want to make a few sandwiches for him. Huh. Got no sandwiches from me. Well, no sincerity, no sandwiches. That's your motto, isn't it? No? Oh, dear. How heavy we all are without Martin. How he would have adored all this. He'd have invented the most extravagant and incredible sins to confess to. Oh, don't look so dreadfully solemn, you two. I can't help thinking about bright remarks and sandwiches. to let them in yourself, Robert. Have you really known a long time? Yes. More than a year. I've often wanted to say something to you about it. What would you have said? I don't quite know. Something idiotic. But friendly. Very friendly. And I only guessed about you tonight, Frida. Seems so obvious, I can't think why I never guessed before. Mm, neither can I. This is all quite mad, isn't it? Quite mad. I'm rapidly getting madder. I don't care, do you? It's rather a relief. I really can't. Hello, Frida. Sorry about all this, but it's all Robert's doing. He's insisted on our coming back. Well, I think Robert was right. That's a change, anyhow. Well, what's it all about? Chiefly about that money. Oh, well, I thought as much. Why can't you leave poor Martin alone? No, wait a minute, Gordon. Martin didn't take that check. What? Is that true? Are you sure? Yes. Well, if he didn't, who did? And why did he shoot himself? We were hoping you'd tell us. You're being funny, Robert. Not a bit. I didn't ask you back here to be funny. You told me that you were practically certain that Martin took that check. Yes. And I told you why I thought so. All the evidence pointed that way. And what happened afterwards proved that I was right. Did it? Well, didn't it? 
If you did, why did you tell Martin that you thought Robert had taken it? <laughs> Don't be ridiculous, Frida. Why should I tell Martin that I thought Robert had done it? Well, that's what we want to know. Well, of course I didn't. Yes, you did. Alwyn, are you in this too? Yes, I'm in it too. Because you lied like that to Martin, telling him you were sure that Robert had taken that check. You've given me hours and hours of misery. I never meant to, Alwyn. How could I know that you'd go and see Martin and that he would tell you? It doesn't matter whether you knew or not. It was a mean, vile lie. And after this, I feel I never want to speak to you again. I'm sorry, Alwyn. I would rather have anything happen than that. You do believe that, don't you? The rest of us don't seem to matter very much, but you owe us a few explanations. Yes. You'd better stop lying now, Stanton. Why did you play Martin and me off against each other? There can only be one explanation. Because he took that check himself. My God, you didn't, did you, Stanton? Uh, yes, I did. Then you're a rotten swine, Stanton. I don't care about the money, but you let Martin take the blame. You let him do think he was a thief. But you let I did not let Martin take the blame. He wasn't the sort to take the blame. And you ought to know that. It, it happened. But in the middle of all the fuss about the money, Martin shot himself. You all jumped to the conclusion it was because he had taken the money and was afraid of being found out. I'd... I just let you go on thinking it. That's all. <laughs> you might just as well think he'd shot himself for the money as for anything else. Anyway, he was done with it. He was out of it. Besides, where he's gone, it doesn't matter a damn whether people here think you've stolen 500 pounds or not. But you deliberately tried to shift the blame onto Martin or me. Of course he did. That's what makes it so foul. Not really. I have not the least intention of letting anyone else be punished for what I'd done. I was only playing for time. I took that check because I had to have some money quickly. I... I didn't know where to turn. I knew that I could square it within a week. I knew, too, that if necessary, I could... I could make it all right with old Slater, who's a sportsman. But when it all came out, I had to play for time, and that seemed to be the easiest way of doing it. But you couldn't have cashed the check at the bank yourself? No, no, I got somebody else to do that for me, a fellow who could keep his mouth shut. It was pure coincidence that he was the same age and build as you and Martin. Oh, don't go thinking there was any deep-laid plot. There wasn't. There never is in real life. It was... It was all improvised and haphazard. I'm damn stupid. Why didn't you confess to this before? Why the devil should I? Well, if you can't understand that, it's hopeless for us to try and show you. But there is such a thing as common honesty and decency. Is there? I wonder. Don't forget, before you become too self-righteous, that you happen to be taking the lid off them. Might be somebody else's turn before we finished. Possibly. But that doesn't explain why you've kept so quiet about all this. I should have thought it did. Martin's suicide put paid to the whole thing. Nobody wanted to talk about it after that. Dear Martin must have done it. So we won't mention it. That was the line. It wasn't the 500 pounds. I'd have been glad to replace that, but I knew damn well that if I'd confessed, the old man would have had me out of the firm in two minutes. Wasn't one of his pets like you and Martin. I'd had to work myself up from nothing in that firm. I hadn't been brought in because I had the right university and social backgrounds. If the old man had thought for a minute that I'd done it, there'd have been none of this hush hush business. He'd have felt like calling in the police. Don't forget, I'd been a junior clerk in the office. You fellows hadn't. Makes a difference, I can tell you. But my father's been retired from the firm for six months. Oh, well, if he has, the whole thing was over and done with. Why open it up again? It might never have been mentioned if you hadn't started this damn fool inquisition tonight. Robert and Gordon and I were working well together in the firm. What would have happened if I'd confessed? Where are we? 
who's better off because of this. You're not, it's true. But Martin is, and the people who cared about Martin. Are they? Of course they are. Don't be too sure. At least we know he wasn't a mean thief. And that's all you do know. But for all that, he shot himself. Well, you don't suppose he did that for fun, do you? Martin shot himself, and he did it knowing that he hadn't taken the money. So it must have been something else. Let's see what you've started now. Well, what have we started now? You're talking as though you know a lot more about Martin than we did. <clears throat> Perhaps he did it because he thought I'd taken the money. If you think Martin would have shot himself because he thought you'd taken some money, then you didn't know your own brother. Why, he laughed when I told him. It amused him. A lot of things. Amuse that young man. It's true. He didn't care. He didn't care at all. Look here. Do you know why Martin shot himself? No, I should have. You talk as if you do. I can imagine reasons. What do you mean by that? I mean, he was that sort of a chap. He got his life into a mess. I don't blame him. You don't blame him. Who are you to blame or not to blame him? You're not fit to mention his name. You hung your mean little piece of thieving round his neck and tried to poison our memory of him. And now you've been found out and Martin's name is clear of it. You want to begin all over again and start hinting that he was a, a lunatic or a criminal or something. That's true. The less you say now, the better. The less we all say, the better. You should have thought of that before. I told you as much before you started dragging all this stuff out, but like a fool you wouldn't leave well alone. Well, at least I've cleared Martin's name. You've cleared nothing. Glimmer of sense, you'd see it. But I don't give a damn. You're going to get all you ask for. One of the things we shall ask for is to be rid of you. Do you think we'll stay on with the firm after this? I don't know. I don't care. You did a year ago. Yes. No, I don't. I can get along better without the firm than they can without me. Well, after this, at least it will be a pleasure to try. You always hated Martin. And I knew it. I have my reasons. Unlike the White House family, Father, daughter, and son, who fell in love with him. I must ask you to take that back, Stanton. Or kindly explain yourself. I'll take nothing back. Please, don't let's have any more. We've all said too much already. I'm sorry, Owen, but you can't blame me. I'm waiting for your explanation. Can't you see it's me he's getting at? Is that true, Stanton? Why do you think that Frida is so angry with me? There can only be one reason. I've known it for a long time. She was in love with Martin. <laughs> is that true, Frida? I wouldn't have said it if I hadn't known it was true. Whether she admitted or not is another matter. Frida, is it true? Yes. Uh, that's been the trouble all along. Yes. When did it begin? Ages ago. Before we were married? Yes. I thought I could break it then. I did for a little time. But it came back worse than ever. I wish you told me before. I wanted to. Hundreds of times I seem to have tried. I've said the opening lines to myself, you know, and Sometimes I've hardly known if I didn't actually say them out loud to you. Why didn't I say it for myself? Seems plain enough now. I know now when it began. 
It was when we were all down at Tintagel that summer. Yes. That's when it began. Tintagel. That lovely, lovely summer. Nothing's ever been quite real since then. Martin went away walking. And you said you'd stay a few days with the Hutchinsons. Was that...? Yes. Martin and I spent that little time together. It was the only time that we did really spend together. It didn't mean very much to him. The sort of experiment, that's all. Didn't he care? No, not really. If he had done, it would have all been so simple. That's why I never told you. And I thought that when we were married, <laughs> it would be different. It wasn't fair on you, I know. I thought it would be all right. And so did Martin. But it wasn't. It was hopeless. But you don't know how hopeless it was for me. Why didn't he tell me himself? He knew how unhappy I was. He couldn't. He was afraid of you. Martin, afraid of me? Yes, he was. That's nonsense. He wasn't afraid of anybody, certainly not of me. Yes, he was, in some strange way. He was, Robert. I knew that. So did I. He told me that when you're really angry, you'll stop at nothing. I never knew Martin felt like that. Yet it was he who... I wonder why. What was it? It couldn't have been this. I... No, no. It didn't care. Oh, Martin. Frida. Frida, don't. That's how it goes on, you see, Captain. Good evening's work you've done. I'm not regretting it. I'm glad all this has come out. I just wish to God I'd known a bit sooner, that's all. What difference would it have made? You couldn't have done anything? Well, at least we'd have known the truth, and then something might have been done about it. I wouldn't have stood in their way. You didn't stand in their way. No. It was Martin himself, you see. He didn't care, as Frida says. I knew he told me about it. He told you? Yes. Frida's brother? <laughs> Gone, I don't believe you. Why should I lie about it? Martin told me. He used to tell me everything. Rubbish! You thought you were a little nuisance always hanging about him. That isn't true. <laughs> it is. He told me that, that Saturday when I gave him the cigarette box. He said then that you'd stayed the night before at the cottage and he'd done everything he could to get rid of you. Frida, you're making this up every word about me. I know you are. Martin would never have said that about me. He knew how fond I was of him. And he was fond of me, too, in his own way. He was You're just saying this because you're jealous. I'm not. You've always been jealous of Martin's interest in me. <laughs> God, that's simply a disgusting lie. It isn't. It is. He told me himself how tired he was of you hanging about him and suddenly becoming hysterical. Every time he's been mentioned tonight, you've been hysterical. What are you trying to make me believe you are? <laughs> jealousy, jealousy. If he thought I was a nuisance, Martin wouldn't have kept asking me down to the cottage. He was tired of you pestering him and worrying him all the time. He was sick of women. He told me so. He wanted me to tell you so that you'd leave him alone. You're making me feel sick! Will you just Stop leave it. me alone? Stop it, both of you! Let them have it out. They might as well now they've started. And I was going to tell you too. Only <laughs> then he killed himself. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Martin couldn't be that cruel. Couldn't he? What did he say to you that afternoon when you took in the cigarette box? Oh, what does it matter what he said? You're just making up these abominable lies. Now look here! I'm not having any more of this. You're like a pair of lunatics screaming at each other like that over a dead man. I understand about you, Frida, and I'm sorry. 
But for God's sake, keep quiet about it now. As for you, Gordon, you must be tight or something. No, I'm not. I'm as sober as you are. Well, then behave as if you were! You're not a child. I know Martin was a friend of yours. Friend of mine? He wasn't a friend of mine. You talk like a fish! Martin was the only person on earth I really cared about. I couldn't help it. There he was. I'd have done anything for him. 500 pounds. My God, I'd have stolen 5,000 pounds from the firm if Martin had asked me to. He was the most marvellous person I'd ever known. Sometimes I tried to hate him. Sometimes he gave me a hell of a time. But it didn't really matter. He was Martin. And I'd rather be with him, even if he was just jeering at me all the time, than be with anybody else I've ever known. I'm like... Frieda since he died. I haven't really cared a damn. I've just been passing the time. He didn't really care for women at all. He tried to amuse himself with them, but he really distrusted them, disliked them. He told me so many a time. Martin told me everything! And that was the finest thing that ever happened to me. And now you can call me any name you like. I don't care. What about Betty? You can leave her out of this. Well, I want to, but I can't help thinking Well, you about needn't. Her. She can look after herself. That's just what she can't do, and you're just sick. Well, I don't see it, and I know Betty better than you do. You know everyone better than anyone else, oh, don't you? Oh, oh, you would say that, wouldn't you? I can't help it if Martin liked me better than he liked you. How do you know that I'm that? Stop that, both of you. Can't you see that Martin was making mischief just to amuse himself? No, I can't. He wasn't like that. Oh, no. Not at all like that. You couldn't ask for a quieter, simpler, more sincere fellow. Nobody's going to pretend he was that. But at least he didn't steal money and then try to put the blame on other people. We could all start talking like that, you know, Frida, just throwing things at each other's heads, but I suggest we don't. Oh, I agree. And I do want Frieda and Gordon to realise that it's simply madness quarrelling about anything Martin ever said to them because he was a born mischief maker and as cruel as a cat. That's one of the reasons why I disliked him so much. You disliked him? Yes. Sorry, Robert, but I didn't like Martin. I detested him and you ought to have seen that. I saw it. And you were quite right, Alwyn. I'm afraid you always are. Oh, no, I'm not. I trust your judgement. So would I for that matter. No, no. And you're the only one of us that's going to come out of this as sound as he went in. No, it's not true. No, it was Owen in that damn cigarette box that started the whole business. No, that was nothing. I knew about that all along. You knew about what? I knew you'd been to see Martin that Saturday night. You knew? Yeah. How could you? I don't understand. I was spending that weekend at my own cottage. You remember the garage where the road forks? You stopped there that night for some petrol. Yes, I believe I did. They told me. And they said you'd taken the Fallows End Road, so I knew you must have been going to see Martin. You couldn't possibly be going anywhere else, could you? It's quite simple. And you've known about it all this time? Yes, all this time. <sighs> I suppose it's no use asking you, Stanton, why you've never said a word about it. I'm afraid not. I think I've done my share in the confession box tonight. Well, I wish I'd known a bit more, that's all. There was I dragged into that fouling quest. Did I know this? Did I know that? My God, and all the time I wasn't the last person he talked to at all. Frieda had been there sometime in the afternoon and Alwyn was there that very night, the very moment for all we know. Don't talk rubbish. Well, is it rubbish? After all, what do we know? What was... Alwyn doing there. She's told us that. She went there to talk to Martin about the money. And how far does that take us? What do you mean by that? It means, I imagine, that Alwyn hasn't told us very much so far. We know that she went to see Martin to talk about the missing money, and we know that Martin thought that Robert had taken it, and that's all we do know. Yes, we don't know how long she was there, or what Martin said to her, or anything. It's a good job she wasn't pushed in front of that coroner, or they'd have had it out of her in no time. I think it's up to her to tell us a little more. Well, there's no need to sound so damn vindictive about it. <laughs> what is it? Nobody there. Well, there was somebody, I swear. They'd be listening. 
Well, they couldn't have chosen a better night for it. There's no sign of anybody. Thank the Lord for that. Who on earth can this be? Well, don't ask me. I haven't the least idea. Go and see. Oh, we don't. We don't want anybody interrupting us now. Oh, don't let them interrupt us, whoever they are. Glad to see you. It is. You've never been mentioned. I know you have. I can feel it. That's why I had to come back. But we haven't, I tell I you. I thought you'd gone to bed, Betty. What's the matter? You're talking about me, all of you. I know you are. I wanted to go to bed, and then I couldn't. I couldn't stand it. I had to come back. Well, you were wrong. As a matter of fact, you're the one person we haven't been talking about. Is that true? Yes, of course. You were outside just now, weren't you? You were outside the window, listening. No. I wasn't listening. I was trying to see exactly who was here and what you all looked like. You see, I was... Sure, you were all saying things about me. Nobody said a word about you. In fact, we wanted to keep you out of it. It's all rather unpleasant. But seeing that Betty's married into one of the families concerned, I think she ought not to be too carefully protected from the sordid truth. Oh, shut up, Freya. Why should I? I thought we were going to see a different Robert now. Yeah. Well, after what you've been saying tonight, I can't see that it matters to you how different I may be. Well, perhaps not, but I still like reading a decent manner. Then set us an example. Oh, shut up, both of you. What have you been talking about, then? It began about the money. <clears throat> you mean that Martin took it? Martin didn't take it. We know that now. Stanton took that money. He's admitted it. Admitted it? Stanton? Well, surely it's impossible. Sounds impossible, doesn't it, Betty? It isn't. I'm sorry to go down with such a bump in your estimation, but this is our night for telling the truth. And I've had to admit, and I took the money. Terrible, isn't it? What are you trying to say, Stanton? I don't understand. I'm sure you don't, Robert. Do you? Yes, I think so. If Martin didn't take the money, why did he shoot himself? That's what we want to know. Alwyn saw him last of all, that very evening, and she knew he hadn't taken the money. But that's all she's told us. I've told you that he thought Robert had taken it. And that was enough in the state that he was in to knock him clean off his balance. All that stuff about his being amused is absolute nonsense. That was just his bluff. Martin hated anybody to think that he was moved or alarmed by anything. That's true. And he depended on me. He used to laugh a lot at me, but he depended on me. You told me yourselves that he was secretly rather frightened of me. Well, it was because he had a respect for me. He thought that I was the, the solid, steady one. I tell you, it must have been a hell of a shock to him. I don't think it was, Robert. Neither do I. Yes, but neither of you knew him as I did. Look, what is the point of talking? He was in a wretched state, all run down and neurotic, and when he heard that I'd taken the cheque, he must have felt there was no one left he could depend on. Probably been brooding over it day and night. He was that sort. He wouldn't let you see it, Holwyn, but it would be there all the time, giving him hell. <sighs> what a fool I was. You? Yes. I should have gone to Martin and told him exactly what Stanton had told me. If this is true, then the person really responsible is Stanton. Yes. That's rubbish. Don't you see what you did? No, because I don't believe it. No, because you don't choose to, that's oh, all. Oh, talk sense. Can't you see that Martin had his own reasons? No. What drove Martin to suicide was my own stupidity and your damned lying, Stanton. Oh. I'm sorry, Betty, this has got to be settled. You're none of you in a state to settle anything. Now listen to oh, me. Drop it, got to I will never forgive you for telling Martin what you did. By God, I You've won't. got it all wrong. He hasn't, you rotten liar. Oh, get out! You made Martin shoot himself! No! Martin didn't shoot himself. I shot him. Oh, that is ridiculous, Alwyn. Is this your idea of a joke? I wish it was. Oh. She means it. You mean she murdered him? Alwyn, you might as well tell us exactly what happened. 
It was an accident, wasn't it? Oh, yes, it was. Really an accident. I'll tell you what happened. I'll tell you the complete truth. I won't hide anything, I promise. I think we'd all better tell everything we know now. Really speak our minds. I agree. Oh, wait. wait. Just water. Thanks. I went to see Martin that Saturday night, as you know, to talk to him about the missing money. Your father had told me about it. He thought either Martin or Robert must have taken it. I gathered it was more likely Robert. So I went to see Martin. I didn't like him. And he knew it. But he knew, too, how I felt about Robert. He believed that Robert had taken the money, and he wasn't a bit worried about it. Sorry, Robert, but he wasn't. I hated him for that. He was rather amused in his malicious way. The good brother fallen at last, that sort of thing. I can believe that. I hate to, but I know he could be like that. He was that day. You found that too? Yes. He was in one of his worst moods. He could be so cruel. I've never seen him as bad as he was that night. He really wasn't saying. Sorry, Robert. I didn't want you to know all this, but there's no help for it now. You see, Martin had been taking some sort of drug. What? Dope! I, I can't believe it. It's true, Cap, and I knew it. So did I. He made me try some once, but I didn't like it. It just made me feel rather sick. He took some while I was there. It was in little white tablets. It, it had a horrible effect on him. I can see him now. His eyes were... He really wasn't sane. What happened? I try not to think about it. It's so horrible. He knew I didn't care for him, but he couldn't believe that I really disliked him. He thought everyone, young, male, female, ought to be in love with him. Yes. He began taunting me. He said I was a priggish spinster full of repressions who'd never really lived. He kept telling me that I disliked him because I was trying to repress a total fascination he had for me. That all these repressions were bad for me and that I'd never lived and I never would live unless I... Oh, he went on and on. I should have left. But I felt I couldn't while he was in that state. In a way, I was sorry for him because, really, he was ill. He was sick in his mind, and I thought, maybe I could calm him down. Well, after all, he wasn't a stranger. He was one of our own set, mixed up with most of the people I like best in the world. I tried hard to stop him, but everything I said, it, it seemed to make him worse. He grew more and more excited. I started laughing at him. <laughs> and then he showed me some drawings he had. Disgusting, obscene things by some Belgian or other. Oh, my God. I'm sorry, Frida. Oh, Martin. But he wasn't like that, really. If you'd known him as I'd known him before. Well, don't listen to any more. I'll stop if you like. You can't stop now, Alwyn. Anyway, there isn't much more to tell. I tried to push the drawings away. That excited him more and more. He kept shouting at me, telling me to take off my clothes. And I told him not to be a fool and that I was going. Then he got between me and the door. He was shouting something about danger, terror, love. He was standing there and he had a revolver in his hand. Oh, he wasn't threatening me with it, or himself. I didn't even believe it was loaded. But by this time I'd had more than enough and I told him, get out of my way. When he wouldn't, I tried to push him. And we struggled. We really fought. 
He was tearing up my clothes and I grabbed him by both hands and... The revolver went off. Oh. Oh. It was so horrible. I've tried and I have tried to forget it. I was in such a panic. If only he'd been wounded. But he wasn't. He was dead. Yes, you needn't tell us. I rushed outside and I sat in the car for I don't know how long. Couldn't move. It was late, there was nobody about. You know how lonely that cottage was. I just sat on and on in the car, shivering. It was all so quiet. So horribly quiet. Oh, God. You can't be blamed, Norman. Of course you can't be blamed. And there must never be a word spoken of this. Not to anybody. We must all promise that. It's a pity we can't all be as cool and businesslike about this as you are, Stanton. I don't feel very cool and businesslike, but perhaps it's not as big a surprise to me as it is to you. I guessed long ago that something like this must have happened. But it looked so much like suicide. It never seemed to me to be anything else. I can't see how you could have guessed. I went over there early next morning. The postmistress at Fallow's End rang me up. I was there before anybody but the village constable and the doctor. And I spotted something that they'd missed. I've kept it with me ever since. Let me see. So that's how you knew? Yes, that's how I knew. Why didn't you say anything? I can tell you that. He didn't say anything because he wanted everybody to think that Martin had shot himself. See, that meant that Martin must have taken the money. That's about it, I suppose. It falls into line with everything we've heard from him tonight. No. There happened to be another reason, and much more important. I knew that if Alwyn had had a hand in Martin's death, then something like that must have happened. And so Alwyn couldn't be blamed. I knew her better than any of you. Or felt I did. And I trusted her. In fact, she's the only person I would trust. You never even hinted to me that you knew. Surprising, isn't it? What a chance I missed to capture your interest, if only for a few minutes. But I couldn't take that line with you. I suppose even nowadays, when we're all so damn tough, there has to be one person who's really important to you. And for me, you've been that person for a long time. I also knew that you were saying nothing in order to protect Robert, and that didn't make it any easier for me. No. What a shame. But what a fine, romantic character you are, aren't you? Betty, you, you don't understand. How could she? You know... I nearly did take you into my confidence, and it might have made a difference, but I chose a bad moment. Why? When was this? Tell me. That night? I told you I'd sat in the car for some time, unable to do anything, but then I felt I had to tell someone, and you were the nearest person. You came over to my cottage? It was about 11 o'clock. I left the car at the bottom of that narrow lane, and I walked up to your cottage. You walked up to the cottage? Yes. I walked right up and saw enough to set me walking straight back again. I think that put the final touch to that night. Since when I've never felt the same about people. I know, I'm stupid, but I can't help it. And you must all have noticed that I'm completely off country cottages. Yes, I think even Betty has noticed that. What's the matter, Betty? What a little liar you are, Betty. Haven't we all been liars? Betty hasn't. 
Don't be a fool, Robert. Of course she has. She's lied like fury. What about? Why don't you ask her? Oh, what does it matter? Leave the child alone. I am not a child. That's the mistake you've all made. Not you and Stanton. Why don't you tell them? It's ridiculous. How can she? Don't be absurd. Robert, I saw them together at Stanton's cottage that night. I won't take even your word for this, Alwyn. Besides, there are other possible explanations. Oh, drop this, man. We've had enough of it already, aren't we? You're not going. Don't be a fool. It's no business of yours. That's where you're wrong, Stanton. This is where Robert's business really begins. I'm waiting for an answer, Betty. What do you want me to say? Were you with Stanton at his cottage? Yes. Were you his mistress? Yes! My God. name how could you how could you how could i because i'm not a child and i'm not a little pretty doll that's why you would drag all this out and now you can damn well have it yes i stayed with stanton that night and i've stayed with him other nights and he's not in love with me and i know it and i'm not in love with him i wouldn't marry him if i could but i got to make something happen Gordon was driving me mad. If you want to call someone a child, then call him one. But that's all he is. This damn marriage of ours that you've all got so sentimental about is the biggest sham there's ever been. It isn't a marriage at all. It's just nothing. Pretense, pretense, pretense. Betty, darling, and Gordon, darling, when all the time he's mooning over his Martin and the very sight of him makes me want to scream. Betty, please. It's not my fault. I was in love with him when we were married. I wouldn't have looked at anybody else if he'd been real. But he, he just isn't there. He can't even talk to me. For God's sake, shut up, Betty. I won't shut up. They want to know the truth and they can have it. I don't care. I've had nothing, nothing out of my marriage but shame and misery. Oh, Betty, that's nonsense. If I were the nice little doll you all thought me, perhaps it wouldn't have mattered. But I'm not. I'm a woman. And Stanton was the one person who guessed what was happening and treated me like a woman. I wouldn't have blamed you if you'd gone and fallen in love properly with someone. But this was just a low, sordid intrigue, a dirty little affair not worth all your silly lies. Oh, I suppose Stanton was the rich uncle in America who kept giving all those fine presents. Yes, he was. You couldn't even be generous. Though you'd have given your precious Martin everything we got. I knew Stanton didn't really care for me, so I got what I could out of him. Served you right. Men who say they're in love with one woman and keep spending their weekends with another deserve all they get. Is that why you suddenly found yourself so short of money that you needed that 500 pounds? Yes. Funny how it all works out, isn't it? And Betty's responsible for everything. For all this misery. For Martin. You see? Always Martin! If I was responsible for all that, then it's your fault, really, Gordon, because you are responsible for everything that happened to me. You ought never to have married me. I didn't know. It was a mistake. We seem to make that sort of mistake in our family. I ought to have left you long before this. That was my mistake, staying on. Pretending to be married to someone who wasn't there. Simply dead. Yes, I think I am dead. I think I died last summer. Olwyn shot me. Gordon, I... I think that's rather stupid and affected. I meant it, Olwyn. I started this tonight. Well, I'll finish it. Betty. I worshipped you. I suppose you knew that. 
she didn't, she must have been very dense. I'm talking to Betty. Did you know? Yes. But I didn't care very much. No, well, why should you? Because I knew you weren't in love with me. You didn't know me. You were only worshipping somebody you'd invented who looked like me. And that isn't the same thing at all. I didn't do anything about it because I thought that you and Gordon were happy together. Yes. We put up a good show, didn't we? Yes, we did. What would have happened if we'd gone on pretending like hell to be happy together? Nothing. No? If we'd gone on pretending long enough, I believe we might have been happy together sometimes. It often works out like that. Never. Yes, it does. That's why all this is so wrong, really. All these half-truths. All it does is blow everything up. It's not civilised. I agree. You agree? You're a thief, a liar, and a filthy, cheap seducer, and I, for one, never want to set eyes on you again. At least I'm not a fool. You wanted the truth. You've got it. But a fool lives in a fool's paradise. And having blown it to pieces, all your own doing, you're busy building yourself a fool's hell to live in. Holwyn was right. Oh, get out. Good night, Holwyn. I'm sorry about all this. So am I. Good night, Frida. Good night. I suppose you two are coming along? With you? And don't forget, Stanton, you owe the firm 500 pounds and a resignation. You're going to take it that way, are you? Yes, I'm going to take it that way. You'll regret it. Good night. Don't trouble. I can find my way out. Don't be too hasty, Gordon. For all his fault, Stanton's a first-class man at his job, and if he goes, the firm will suffer. The firm will have to suffer, that's all. I couldn't work with him after this. Oh, don't worry. It's not a case of the firm suffering. The firm has smashed their hell. Nonsense. Is it? I don't think so. Well, Betty, darling, I think we'd better return to our happy little home, our dear little nest. Don't, Gordon. I'll let you out. Goodbye. Why do you look like that? I'm not saying goodbye to you. I don't know you. I never did, it seems. All I'm saying goodbye to is this. Robert, please don't drink any more tonight. I know how you feel, but it'll only make you worse, really, it will. What does it matter? I'm finished anyway. Oh, Robert, I can't bear to see you like this. I'm sorry, Alwyn. I'm truly sorry. You're the only one who's really come out of this. Strange, isn't it? That you should have been feeling like that about me all this time. Yes, all this time. I am sorry. I'm not. But for myself, I mean. I ought to be, but uh, I'm not. It hurts, but it keeps me going. And now I've stopped going. Something's broken inside. It won't seem so bad tomorrow. It never does. It isn't going to seem any better tomorrow. 
Frida will help you. After all, Robert, she is fond of you. Not really. It isn't that she dislikes me. Every now and then, she hates me. Now I see why, of course, she hates me, because I'm Robert, not Martin, because he's dead. <laughs> and I'm alive. She may feel differently after tonight. Doubt it. But then again, you see, I don't care whether she changes or not. I don't care. You know there's nothing I wouldn't do for you, Robert. I'll go away with you if you like now. Tonight. But nothing happens inside. That's the damned awful, cruel thing. Nothing happens. All hollow, empty. I'm sure it isn't at all the proper thing to say at such a moment, but the fact remains that I feel rather hungry. What about you, Alvin? You, Robert? Or have you been drinking too much? Mmm, I've been drinking too much. That's very silly of you. You did ask for it all. Oh, I asked for it. And I got it. I don't think you minded very much until it came to Betty. Not true. I know you think so, but as more and more of this rotten stuff came out, so more and more I came to depend on Betty. As someone who represented some lovely quality of life. I've known for some time, of course, that you were getting very sentimental and noble about her. I've also known about Betty. And I've often thought of telling you. Well, I'm not sorry you didn't. Well, you ought to be. Why? That sort of self-deception is rather stupid. What about you and Martin? I didn't deceive myself. I knew everything. Or well, nearly everything about him. I wasn't in love with somebody who wasn't really there. Somebody I'd made up. Well, of course you were. We all are. Well, it's not so bad, then. You can always build up another image for yourself to fall in love with. No, I can't. That's the trouble. I've lost the capacity. I've run out of the stuff that creates beautiful illusions. Then you must learn to live without illusions. Can't be done. I started life too early. They're breeding people now who can live without illusions. But I can't do it. I've lived among illusions. You have. Well, what if I have? Given me hope and courage, helped me to live. I suppose we should get all that from faith. Well, I haven't got any. No religion, no nothing. Just this damn farmyard to live in. A few bloody glands and secretions and nerves. And... Still, didn't look too bad. I had my little illusions, you see. And why didn't you leave them alone instead of clamouring for the truth all night like a fool? Because I am a fool, that's the answer. Stanton was right. I started this evening with something to keep me going. Good memories of Martin. A wife who, uh, if she didn't love me, at least seemed too good for me. Two partners I admired and respected. There was a girl I could idealise, no. but Robert, now... please, we know! No, you don't know! You can't know, not as I do. I... You, you wouldn't stand there as if we'd just had some damn stupid squabble over a hand at bridge. Frida, Frida, can't you do something? I do not understand. I am not living in the same world now. Everything is gone. My brother was an obscene lunatic. Stop that. And my wife doted on him. One of my partners is a liar and a cheat. The other, oh, Christ alone knows what he is. And the girl is a common, money-grubbing little bitch. So. No. Oh, no. No. Oh, Robert. Please. Please. He's got a revolver in there. Robert! It can't happen. It shan't happen. <laughs> You have just been listening to a play in eight scenes
specially written for broadcasting by Mr. Humphrey Stoat, called The Sleeping Dog. And that's that. I hope it didn't bore you, Miss Margaret. How many scenes did we miss? Five, I think. I suppose they must have been telling a lot of lies in those scenes. That's why that man was so angry. The husband, I mean. <laughs> Listen to the men. What a snug little group you are. But uh, I suppose you miss your brother-in-law. He used to be down here too with you, didn't he? You mean Robert's brother, Martin? Yes. Oh, dear. Have I dropped a brick? I always am dropping bricks. No, not at all. It was very distressing for us at first, but it's all right now. Martin shot himself. Oh. Yes. Dreadful business, of course. He was very handsome, wasn't he? Yes. Very handsome. Who was very handsome? May we know? Not you, Charles. Oh, they were talking about me. Huh. Betty, why do you allow them to talk about your husband in this fulsome fashion? Have you no shame, girl? Darling, I'm sure you've had too much <clears throat> manly gossip and old brandy. I was sorry to be so long, Frida, but it's that wretched puppy of yours. Oh, dear. What's he up to now? Trying to eat the script of Sonia Williams' new novel. <laughs> I was afraid it might make him sick. <laughs> You see, Miss Mockridge, how we talk of you novelists. Yes, I heard you. I've just been saying what a charming, cosy little group you've made here, all of you. I think you've all been very lucky. Oh, it's not all luck, Miss Mockridge. You see, we happen to be nice, easygoing people. All except Betty. She's terribly wild. That's only because Gordon doesn't beat her often enough. Yet. Yeah. You see, Miss Peel. Mr. Stanton is still the cynical bachelor. I'm afraid he rather spoils the picture. What's disturbing the ether tonight? Anybody know? Gordon, don't start with the game. I've only just turned it off. What did you hear? Last half of a play. It was called The Sleeping Dog. Why? We're not quite sure, but it ends with a gentleman shooting himself. <laughs> what fun they have at the BBC. Mm, shot some things. <laughs> No, I believe I understand that play now. The sleeping dog was the truth, you see, and that man, the husband, insisted upon disturbing it. He was quite right to disturb it. I think telling the truth is about as healthy as skidding around a corner at 60. Mm, life's got a lot of dangerous corners, hasn't it, Charles? It can have, if you don't choose your route well. Let's talk about something more amusing. Who wants a drink? Drinks, Robert. Cigarette. Now, this one's empty. There's some in here. Miss Mockridge. Not for me, thanks. Cigarette? No, thank you. Oh, cigarette. Oh, I remember that box. It plays a tune at you, doesn't it? Good luck. Yes, I remember the tune. Wait a minute. <laughs> Listen to this. Oh, I adore that tune. Can't we talk it over? <laughs> what? Can't we talk it over? <laughs> Actually, I know this one. Well, perhaps a little bit. Oh, I'll see. Oh, you can't refuse. Not that I've already been told. Well, of my slap, we've known can't be talking over. Before it's over, before you whisper goodbye forever, let's talk it over, dear.